Um, my name is Evie Litwock. I was released from federal prison this past August, and prior to that I spent 42 days, six weeks in um, segregated housing. So I'm speaking from that perspective. I had prepared remarks, but after listening to the commissioner and other people speak, I'm way too emotional to read my remarks and hope that I'll be able to say what I'm trying to say. I am also a member of Jack and write a blog for my own company called Ex Offender Nation. The 42 days that I spent in segregated housing, solitary confinement, caused tremendous amount of medical and psychological problems to a point where today I still feel it and know it and have it. And by the way, at 63, I believe that putting anybody, putting a senior into solitary confinement puts them on the endangered species list. Um, and I'm not kidding about that. You are challenging their physical ability. You are being asked to institutionalize a jail within a jail. And I don't believe you have the right to do that. This is, I was convicted of a crime. I lost my liberty. I was put in prison. To have a group of people be allowed to operate a jail within a jail is such a violation. I don't even, I'm speechless. You're also being asked to make, to have it be a 250 bed facility. Mind you, there will always be 250 people, 250 scalpel yielding people intent on hurting someone in a law library because that's the image you're being asked to believe. There won't be 249, there won't be 149. It will be filled because you're creating a layer of an institution that will be permanent and be prepared to be accountable for that because that's what you will be doing Doing by putting this unit in there. If you believe that the vi level of violence of those 250 people are the scalpel yielding things, the fear induced that you've heard this morning, then you also believe that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. It is a lie. I am the face of someone who was a security risk. I am the face of the violence that you're being asked to believe is necessary to create this unit. What did I do? A woman, an inmate, went to a medical officer in serious pain, and she said, I, I need to be treated. Instead of medically testing her, the officer said to her, you're fat, you need to drink water and walk on the track. Her gallbladder burst, and she died two weeks later. I wrote a blog and sent it out through an email. That was considered a security risk. My email was considered a security risk, a violation of policy, and, they, and I was told point blank, I put the officer's life at risk by writing the facts. Now, unless everything is defined so that there can be no question on every word of this proposal, unless everything is defined about what programming is being done, you have my word that whatever is in the rules is not followed. What I live through, and I'll, what I live through is no medical care, even though I asked for it every day. No medical care, I, I suffered, I, I don't want to get into that part of it, but suffice it to say, that whatever is in the rules and regulations is not followed now. So for something like this, where you're asked to believe, don't worry, amen, we got you, we're going to do programming. Amen, we're going to do this. It's coming. It's not coming. It's never coming. It will never be there. So before you put into place more torture, I'll ask you to consider another thing. And I use this as an example when I speak. It's not only that you're thrown into a locked, small, horrific space where you share a toilet with someone, but even to get a roll of toilet paper is something you have to beg for. And that's not going to be in the rule book. The things that you need to survive literally are, is not going to be in that rule book. And it's humiliating to beg for a roll of toilet paper. And what I will tell you is you can put $100 million into training of officers, but if you have not measured for character, 
for even the ability for them to relate to us, then all the training in the world will not matter. They have to be of a certain nature, of a certain temperament, to deal with us. Thank you for your time.